This is the Etches Collection, a new paleontology museum in the Kimmeridge in Dorset. I saw about this in the TV, so I thought that, okay, let's go and see it, it's new. Clay here. Yeah. And the, the thickness of the clay here is 500, or over 500 meters thick, yes. okay? So all through those layers, you'll find ammonites all the way through. Yes. Some you'll find more, mm -hmm. some you'll find less. So if you find lots on one bedding plane, it just means that there's a proper breeding cycle. Yeah, that's what I thought. They just die after they breed. So why the eggs are not so common in that sense? Because no one's looked for them. <laughs> okay. And I had to prove, I had to find them inside the ammonites. Now the next thing we're doing is actually cat scanning mm. all the other sacks of eggs to find if there's any embryonic ammonites inside of any of them. Mm -hmm. And then when we do, watch out, because you know, we've already published the paper describing the ammonite eggs. No and you are a co-author of that paper? Yeah. That's great. The main author of the paper. So basically, we've done it with a couple of academics. Mm. Really, no one's come back and said, we think you're wrong. But of course, if you find the embryonic ammonites inside, they will be the first embryonic ammonites inside the, sh inside the eggs as well. And uh, do you have any sample that is on display with this kind of possibility or no? You have it for your the, the, the analysis. There's three sacks of eggs up there. You saw them. Yeah, it's eyes Okay, eyes. well, the trouble is they're not very well displayed in the sense that mm. it's too small and diminutive. But yeah. the bottom sack of eggs, you've got tubercles all over the egg capsule, which is mm. maybe a bit more advanced than close to hatching, so I don't know. That's, That's very interesting. That research. Yeah. Um, may I just ask you, I will make another video of, on that. I knew really what a fossil was, but basically uh, where I lived, I was just digging in the garden, because mm. kids do, I learned the kids do love digging holes, and yeah. found this funny, it looked like a little bead. But oh. For example, <laughs> someone said, oh, it's a fossil, isn't it? What happened that you ke kept it so I long? I kept it, but I kept it in my mother's button box. In those oh. days, because of a family of five, kids would always lose their buttons and everything, so yeah. she had a massive tin with all buttons in it, and she shoved it in there. And of course, it never got lost. Otherwise, I would have swapped it or lost it in school or whatever. So that's the only fossil I've retained from childhood, really. How much you want to yourself to stick to that story? I said that you're a plumber, or you were a plumber, and you're, you you become oh, okay. a. So plumbing, naturally, most people, you know, if you're really interested, want to be a paleontologist. Mm -hmm. There's no money in paleontology. No. Okay, so yeah. you, there's no jobs hardly in yes. paleontology. So on the, on the back of doing work, like plumbing and heating, mm -hmm. I did that on the side. Oh. Okay, so that's a hobby, interest, or whatever. So the, the, the plumbing paid for all the ancillary materials to do the flip Oh, that practically means it's a costly hobby. Oh, it's costly because cleaning the fossils. Yeah, you see them up there, yeah. but that's not how you find them. Yes. So basically they're rough and a big slab. Mm. It takes hundreds of hours to clean them. Of course, it takes the tools used to clean them. Mm. Well, I could probably spend probably for 60, 70 thousand pounds on tools. On oh, just tools? Yeah, tools and air abrasives, yeah. yeah. And these are the tools that you have in your private yeah, in my space, own workshop, workshop at the moment, the main workshop up there is not mm. functional because mm. as they found out their cost, it, it costs a lot more than they thought. They yeah. have money to actually get it operational. Yeah. We need another £20,000 to bring it online. So and Hopefully they will do within the next month or so because people are going to be quite disappointed when they don't see anything happening in the workshop. Yeah, of course, you will. hopefully you will have some samples that you're working gradually yeah, yeah, on. Well, it's like a reptile, actually put on that big table. Yes. But it's pointless putting it in, so I've got something to work on, but I'm probably bringing it up next week and there, and actually people look and see it. So the next question is about your instincts. When you reach a find and you have to extract it and bring yeah. it, how you are sure that uh, what is laying under it so without damaging the valuable parts. Have you ever damaged any specimen yeah, that you regret? Yeah. But, like <laughs> everything, glues, you've got modern glues, you can put the stuff back. Um, not often, because the thing is, when you find, say, a trace, you've got to work out the angle it's lying at, mm -hmm. how big it is, and basically you just take a really large slab, 
But some of them look really three-dimensional. Usually you see flat uh, fish fossils, for example, I'm talking about. Yeah. And then some of them you have found, they have the face actually yeah, turning that towards you. Yeah, that blocks that thick. Yeah. So you've got to peel all that off. Yeah. You see what I mean? So there's a lot of work. In, I used to be six foot six. I'm now five foot six. I've so, lost a foot because of the compression of my spine. Now, it's maybe great. just another question. Was it your personal charm, or was it the personal the weight of, the weight of your discoveries that make the council actually build such a museum right, based on because, your finds? Okay, so basically the material you've, we've got there mm. in the reserve collection is not held in any major museum in the country. Yeah. So I filled a big gap in the collected deficiencies from the collection. Mm. So hence, its importance is immense in the sense of. No one else has got that sort of So your council must be really visionary people that could see the potential. Not the council, but the lottery. Lottery. The lottery, not oh. the council paid for that. They, mm. they, actually, the council had given us, uh, I forget how much money, they gave us a certain amount of money to get off the ground. But um, no, it's the lottery. The, how much money is it spent here? The, lot, the lottery had given us 2.7 million. That's and the rest of it is on the match fund. And you, you are hopeful that we'll actually be paying for that for them? in a way, because they're investing in this We're as a We're not paying any money back to them, they give it you. Oh, they, yeah, yeah. they give it as a oh, yeah. charity? Because everyone, yes, yes, because it's a charity anyhow, they oh. give it. But they they got certain um, powers over it for mm. the next three years. They, you know, we've got to follow their rules how we do it. Mm. Project, so. yeah. And this is just the first week, I suppose, that you have started the third uh, day. Third day. Uh, I saw that with much of how much love you actually wipe the floor even when you see something stained the, yeah, the, yeah. the tiles and everything. It shows the love, you know, that's, that's, yeah. that's very, very, you know, appreciable. I really see that love there. <laughs> Thank you, Steve, for this uh, little uh, talk. Oh, I like that map. Let me just see the map. Here, come and see the map, actually. That's, that's what it's, it's all about. And in relation to the whole British Isle. I'm telling you, all, the, all around the world, this Kimmeridge clay is famous for having a Oil beds. That's a steep edge that uh, discovered many of the samples that you see here. The interactive screen is really large. Let me go first to that big, 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 full of food. Oh, this is beautiful. <laughs> Susan, this is beautiful. <laughs> oh, it's exciting. <laughs> And you know what, what is interesting about this? They have made the display in a way that you don't have much reflection. They have really designed it well. Oh, I feel so privileged to be here. Inside the belly of this ichthyosaur, you can see there is a lot of fish scale, a fish uh, bone. But at the same time, you see some part there which has a big lump in it. And this has been not flattened as the other parts. And Steve was actually showing this in the BBC I saw. So. Yeah, I think it was in 2012 I found the tooth of the ichthyosaur. And now I'm sure that this is the ichthyosaur tooth because I can see similar to that here. Even with the same incremental growth patterns. Like the one that is center. Oh, I love this. Look at no reflection at all. 
This is really a well-designed museum. And uh, Stephen BBC was explaining that this animal, the head of this ichthyosaur, you are seeing it from above first, but it was bitten, uh, had a bite something. Some creature had a bite of, on top of this, from top of this. The pattern of the tooth. Size. And her tired looking at this little belly of this ichthyosaur. That's a piece of ammonite, Susan, here. Yeah. That's a little piece of ammonite. You were talking about what is the content of the belly of this ichthyosaur. The stomach? Yeah. Yeah, it's just full of fish. Fish like, see the vertebrae above there. I see something there see. also. It's like a little, like a small like a little, like a little yeah. of a small No, 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 it's all fish. That? that big bulge there yeah. is where it's, it's stuck up. Is actually a bone. It's a resistance. But no, oh. you're talking about that one there. What one? one? Oh, yeah, here. Right. In, the, in this screen you can see. Hang can on. you see it? Hang on. Let's get the answers. Hold on. That bit there. That's a vertebra. Fish oh, vertebra is another one there. Oh, right. oh, see. Yeah, there's okay. loads of them. Look, if you look closely, oh, you, know, you can see them all. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh -huh. And there's squid hooks in there as well. Where, where, where is the squid hook? Oh, can't share it. The trouble is, you've got to be closer to them than. It's an um, amazing fossil. Oh, yeah. They're there. I can show because I, you know, there's, there's, they're so small, you can see one. I can't see them, but I can see a couple of black ones there. They're little tiny black hooks. If you look at those up there, see those black hooks up on there? I think we've seen them in the Is it this one? Oh, Christ. No, that's another vertebra. Hang on. Uh, what have you got? Let's get down. Oh. down. It's that then? Hang on. We've right. seen them in the shale. Well, there's a black hook there, I think. Yeah. Mm. Um, Oh, I see that part. Yeah. Right near the bus. There's it. another black hook just, I think, there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're there, but, you know, you, you've got to be closer to it. Yeah. So you not notice the, um, the, the best bit, then? Yeah. <laughs> Orange. <laughs> see that patch over the top of the yeah. roof, not under it? Yeah. yeah. Well, what's that, then? Because you're a geologist. What was the you patch, uh, Can you show me in here? Hang on. Wait a minute. Yeah. No, that, 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 that. There. That. What's that with me? Hmm. That's a good question. What is it? Yeah, go on then. Come just, on, then I've seen it right it. now. Let me just <laughs> look at it more carefully. What do you think it oh. might be a fresh reduced element? There's so, that's a probably a piece of a skin. Still no, says, not properly, it is. It, it is. is. Yeah, that's the elastin in it. So, elastin has not changed all, all over this. Uh, it's just the way the skin pulls like. There's so much in this fossil to look at. Even the eye socket, you can oh. see the eye socket pieces, plates that are around the eyes. Eat or be eaten. Just in tracks with the display ops. It shows the actual sea. Oh. I want to take a picture of that skin. These samples are really extraordinary. You can see the scales on there. It's so beautiful to see. 
uh, not only preserved, I mean, taking them out, knowing that what you are doing and don't damage it by mistake. Yeah. You need a lot of time. That's the tooth. Basket lock jaw. Teeth come out in curves, designed for sieving his food. Eight fishes and squids. The dentition is that one up there. Oh, looks like the alien vs. Predator. <laughs> oh, the skin is even there. Is it skin or skin? Oh, that is lovely. Jaw and the teeth. Not all of them have sharp teeth and scales preserved of course they have been squashed and you can see they have been broken a little bit sometimes and they have been repaired Rich. that's a squid that's what it says it's been crunched in half. But that's the squid which is crunched in half. No, that one is. That one, I think you have even the ink sack. Yeah. Or is it ink sack? Try the front head of the squid. All kind of shelly creatures, including brachiopod probably, and uh, ammonites, as you can see there, more ammonites, more ammonites. Oh, look at that. Big show, best bit. That is also at an angle, as you see. This was a scatter because it was eaten or something. And a big vertebra. Limb bone. Oh, that really looks like a bone. I'm surprised they are so dense. They don't look light like a bird's bone. They look dense. Anyway. That's the echinoid. Oh, I love. Yeah. That's echinoid. Yeah, these are bivalves and shellfish. And of course. This is a razor show. Sure. 
קלינואיד, אוקיי. סיורואיד. קופרלייט, סוזן, קום פה. קופרלייט. סטרימנס של הסי, קוראים קופרלייט. קופרלייט זה פופ. Oh, ink sack. That one has ink sack in it. That is squeeze. The ink sack of it is preserved. And there is another ink sack inside this stomach of this fish. And shark pool. The copper light of the shark, it looks very similar to the land animals of the light. <laughs> oh, this one has the scales of uh, another creature in it. That's a garfish. It's curled like a chicken pen. Yeah. Usually you see fish fossils, fossil fishes, in a very flattened way. This one you can see actually in 3D as if it's turning toward you and the mouth is open and head has turned toward the viewer. And that's a fossil shrimp. Very fine detail. And that's the cause of a shrimp. And these are lobsters. Oh, these are rare. I've not seen much lobsters. So perfect. And look at the lobsters and the, the soft side. shrimps. Oh, inside that one live the shrimp. Or a lobster living inside the owner. Oh, the tail bones of a, and the end bones of a ichthyosaur. With the ink sac preserved. Another one. More squids. Sweet word. These are three dimensional. You can see actually the cross section of the squid. Beautiful. Oh, tail fish of a tail bones of a fish. Giant fish, look at that. The tail and the head. And scattered again, beautiful samples of the squids. These are beautiful. So okay, Steve H find this uh, 
Uh, echinoid, sea urchin, age five, when he was five years old. So, develop the taste for it. That's the workshop that he do some you know, sample demonstration of the cleaning process of the fossil, making it suitable for display. And that is him. All kind of Petrosaurus. Humerus, Pantil gel, Sacrum, Virtual Wing, and uh, Vertebra and other bones. Are they related also to the flying reptile? They look huge. Again, all kind of uh, uh, ammonites comes down to ammonite eggs. Yes, yeah, Susan, ammonite eggs. They look like fish egg. They or a snail egg. Little snail eggs, okay. Oh my goodness, don't they just got any water snail eggs? Oh my goodness. So, the first time they discovered the eggs of the ammonites was here in Cambridge. The most interesting find here is a coral polyps attached to a piece of wood, which you can see here. That wood has become almost uh, carbonized, you know, it's, it's like a piece of coal. Is that amazing or I think that is looking like liquid, is it? Is it resin? Is it resin? I don't know. Resin will destroy it practically because you will not be able to do anything on it unless you cut it. Partial male ray. Male ray, oh. Shark bits. Probably from the arthritis. Living in water all the time, wet. Yeah, you get arthritis. <laughs> I need a paleontologist. <laughs> Kant. That's the fish that yet you can find in Indian Ocean near the Madagascar. Can you spot the different types of fin spines? Oh, fin spines. Oh. Yeah, the skin of the sharks have a kind of sandpaper structure so people, people use it actually as a lack of sandpaper Consider that the ichthyosaurs could be also hunchback. Yeah. 
Most interesting bit, colored barnacle plate. And that bed is full of the diving missing barnacles. That's a, a pirate. Pirateized. <coughs> and now looking at a giant from the front. That's the mouth of the ichthyosaur. How it looked. eaten by one of these or as the Noah they say by whale it would have looked like this and that's the aquarium style displays on top and that's the real star of the show it's flowing by the current enjoying it is uh, yeah As if moving on a warm current, basking in the water. A little fishy tail. Oh, it's disappearing. Where it is gone. That's a very beautiful museum, very camera friendly because they could easily ruin everything by just putting ex the lights in the wrong way. But now you can have it. And we arrived, we were the first one and look, immediately people arrived. How many of them are local? How many of them came from? Yeah, I thought that it looked bird, bird-like. Because I suppose they can... Different species live the side by side, adapting to the variant competing for the same resources. Bird like, show, picture, fish like, or whatever that. Very interesting.